now I'll just did that type of opening just to mess about and um, see how lucky I can get um, <laughs> I'm really quite impressed that it did work <laughs> that's brilliant okay obviously I wouldn't do that um, all the time but it, it's nice to surprise players so we came out and took a while for oh well you know it's a, just a practice game let's see what we can do just disturb the king obviously it's going to show we're out and out losing for the majority of this game because we've given a piece up but we've chosen to do that to unsettle the king and if the opponent plays it correctly obviously then we won't stand a chance because we've given a piece up but we're looking at trying to improve our position during the game so we put a little bit of a check on the king king moves back it's plus 7.5 so we don't stand a chance and the reason why obviously I'm showing this is that if you're playing over the board games you're playing online whatever it is um, it's about not giving up obviously if it's a really bad position and you know you, <laughs> it's it's done um, then you know you can give up and then that shows like respect but if you've done it kind of on purpose if you sacrifice the piece and you're, you're trying to practice something um, and if you get caught short but your position don't look too bad um, and you can still play on it's those moments where you can play on and try and improve your game and look to see if the person having more pieces on the board whether it is advantageous to them or not normally I find it's harder for them because they've got so many pieces to think about that they end up just focusing on one or two so they developed the knight, we castle, so we're just playing our normal chess here, now attacking the bishop, grabbing, and the reason why we can go for the um, exchanges is because the opponent's got more pieces, so they're more likely to agree to actually reduce pieces off the board because they've got more pieces than yourself. So the queen comes out, they're plus five at the moment, we develop the knight, and we're looking to try and put some sort of pressure towards the bishop and the knight it's pretty obvious but if they don't then at least we've got pressures here we've got like a check on the king with the queen king can't castle now so it's stuck in the middle of the board so we're looking at all these invisible pressures uh, towards the king gary so they do capture we capture with the pawn moves the bishop down again focusing on like little single pieces so we're giving them things to think about and they've got more pieces on the board than us so the rook comes across, now it's now plus 1.7. It's dropped dramatically and they have more, more pieces on the board than us. So we pushed onto the knight and then we grabbed with a check on the king. So it's still plus one, which is really quite good for us. All because of the pressure of the king, the king being in the center of the board and basically where the ones doing the attacking. Knight comes down, we can take, so now it's like minus or a draw, minus, so minus is good, we've got less pieces on the board. The queen moves out of the way with a check, that did surprise me, but I'm thinking, well, we've still got like a discover check here with the knight and the queen, but doesn't like that move. Just let me just jump back and see what it's saying, knight e6 check. What? Oh yes, yeah, sorry, knight e6. Bringing the knight back. Okay, blocking with the knight because we've got to check with the queen. Mm, maybe not. I didn't really, I don't think. I was going to move the knight somewhere, but I thought, well, I'm not getting his queen, so I'm not moving it. I'll save that. Don't have a problem moving the king. Um, it did surprise me because I thought, well, where does this come from? So moving the king out of the way did seem appropriate, but it's plus 5.4 so they're kind of out and out winning here so they grabbed but maybe they weren't supposed to be grabbing maybe they were supposed to be bishop takes d4 so the bishop should have taken all right okay but they didn't so we pushed our pawn up they're still plus 5.1 so they're still winning and then we capture the queen we don't want any big guns on the board but we're giving them some sort of advantage somewhere but we cared not because positionally on the board we're feeling fairly comfortable 
plus 4.9 so now we can bring the rook across and we did have sights it all depended on what the opponent did really because at the end of the day he didn't have to move his knight anywhere we were just trying in our heads ideally the picture would go like this and the rook would be sat there but the knight is bothering everything and now it's not so we could continue with that move as best possible and the only thing that could stop it would be the knight coming back again but then they would lose the rook with a check on the king and at that point then it's um, unbelievably a checkmate so don't give up and especially if you're practicing sacrifices and stuff like that those types of sketchy games like these are really like especially for playing against over the board type things you know you just you can shock them um, it's very risky I'll, you know if I was in a bad position I suppose I would then have to look at what sacrifices can I make and this type of thing will, would help with that sort of psychology it's not something I would you know say yeah go out and sacrifice your pieces but the majority of people get put in a position on ch in chess where it's, you're not too comfortable but when you look in the evaluation and you see that well if you'd have sacrificed that piece you would have been in a better position or the opponent would have had a lot more to think about than what you actually did so yeah thinking differently in chess is, is a key thing really and I, I've really enjoyed playing this game got the shock of my life